For the most part, I love my MacBook Pro. It's the machine that can easily handle all my tasks from programming to content creation. But lately I've been traveling a lot. I actually just got back from the United States and needed to check in my suitcase for the flight because it was just above the weight limit, which I'm pretty sure the MacBook Air would have passed. And with the new M4 MacBook Air lineup, I decided that this year is finally the year when I get my first ever MacBook Air. And in this video, I'm gonna answer whether the Pro or the Air is the right choice for you. I decided to bump the specs a little bit from the base model just to be safe with editing and ended up going with the 15 inch version with a 10 core CPU and a 10 core GPU. Also it has 24 gigs of RAM and 512 gigs of storage. So this is pretty much bang on middle of the aisle specs. And of course the boy had to go with the sky blue colorway. If you've ever watched my videos you know that light blue is my favorite color. I mean all my thumbnails have some hint of blue in them. It's kind of part of my brand. A lot of people said that the MacBook Air doesn't actually look blue, which is kind of true, but at least in sunlight it looks so good. And I mean, next to the silver colorway, you can clearly see the difference. Now, on the other hand, I got the 16 inch M4 Max MacBook Pro with a 16 core CPU and a 40 core GPU, as well as 48 gigs of RAM and a 1 terabyte storage. Now, now that specs wise, it's much beefier than the Air model, but when we go over the performance tests, try to keep in mind that the Pro cost over two and a half times more than the Air. And you might be surprised on how well the Air is actually holding up. And speaking of price, Apple has again blessed us with 16 gigs of RAM for the base model of the MacBook Air coming in at just $9.99, whereas for the Pro, you're looking at $1,600 for the base model. So of course, when it comes to pricing, the Air absolutely smokes the Pro, when you compare the base models. But something I noticed when I started specking up the air is that the price creeps up quick if you add some extra RAM or storage. And at the end, for almost the same price I paid for my MacBook Air, I could have gotten the 14 inch MacBook Pro with similar specs, which was actually quite interesting. Now let's talk about the display because I think this is the biggest difference you'll notice on a daily basis. On the air, you get a liquid retina display with LED backlighting and 500 nits of brightness. While on the Pro, you have a liquid retina XDR display with mini LED backlighting and 1000 nits of sustained brightness, which can bump up to 1600 nits when watching HDR content. And in simple terms, that just means that the Pro display is quite a bit brighter than the air. So if you're someone who works next to windows or under bright lights, then keep this in mind as more brightness is crucial when working in bright places. And the colors, especially the blacks, are much deeper on the Pro display. Also, the Air display is 60Hz, while the Pro model has the Pro motion up to 120Hz. Now, I know a lot of people shit on the Air for still having 60Hz in 2025. I personally don't mind it as my eyes are quite used to 60Hz from my main monitor already. But I gotta say, when you have them side by side and you're scrolling some articles or code files, you can definitely feel the difference. And this year, the Air supports up to two 6K displays, but I always think to myself, if you're someone who has a dual 6K monitor setup, then are you someone who's gonna buy a MacBook Air to power them up? Probably not. Of course, one of the biggest reasons to go for the Air over the Pro is the portability of it. And this whole video has been edited on the MacBook Air with no external displays connected to it. And I truly think that this screen is the perfect size for me. I'm still able to see the editing timeline nicely and code files as well. And usually I like to work with just one window open at a time anyways, so switching between the windows isn't a big problem for me. Also, something to note is that most camera bags and other backpacks support laptops up to 15 inches big, so finding a nice looking backpack to carry this thing around is much easier than for the Pro version, given you'd go for the 16 inch one, of course. And while we're at it, the 15 inch Air weighs around 25% less than the 16 inch Pro, which on paper may not seem like a big deal, but trust me, when I'm holding this side by side, I can easily feel the difference and the Air is much nicer to have on your lap as well. One caveat to this is that if you don't really care about the big screen, then the 14 inch Pro is probably a good one for you as it weighs pretty much the same as the 15 inch Air. For the battery life, Apple says that the MacBook Air can get up to 18 hours of video playback and 21 hours for the Pro with the Max chip. When I was editing, I was able to get around 4 to 5 hours of battery life from the Air without having to charge it, and from my Pro I can get anywhere between 6 to 8 hours depending on what I'm doing. We'll have to see how the battery life ages in the day in the life video in a few weeks. One of the major letdowns with the Air is that it only supports two Thunderbolt 4s and a headphone jack, 
so connecting the air to a TV for example will be quite annoying. In this area the Pro absolutely dusts the air with its support for 2 Thunderbolt 4s, 1 Thunderbolt 5, an HDMI port, an SD card slot and a headphone jack. As someone who makes videos, I personally like to be able to just plug in my SD card into my laptop and transfer everything over to my SSD without any adapters. And one annoying thing on the air is that because the only Thunderbolt ports are so close to each other, I wasn't able to fit in the Thunderbolt going into my SSD while also having my SD card reader plugged in. So basically if I want to transfer footage from my SD card to my SSD using the air, I need to get a whole new adapter. When it comes to the difference between the keyboards, I gotta say that I prefer the Pro a lot more. I don't know how to explain it other than I feel like the Pro keyboard gives more feedback on your keystrokes. It's more snappier I guess and the travel is a bit longer on the air compared to the Pro. Though I don't notice any major slowing down when it comes to typing on the air, my words per minute is already hella low but I think the typing experience is overall better on the Pro keyboard. But this is one of those things where it's completely personal preference. I thought the air speakers would be terrible compared to the Pro since it doesn't have the speakers on the sides. And I mean look, you can clearly hear the difference between the two, but I don't think you'll have any issues watching YouTube videos or movies with the air speakers either. Now let's talk about the performance and I can already see the comments, look no one is buying a MacBook Air for its performance. But let me tell you, this thing is a beast. I don't want to be that guy who just lists specs from a paper sheet, so I decided to run some real life tasks instead. When it comes to single core performance, they're pretty much neck and neck according to most benchmarks. And as you can see from the build of the Playwright project, which by the way is a great end to end test framework built by Microsoft. The M4A and the M4 Max pretty much finished the build at the same time. So I'd say the benchmarks were correct on the single core performance. But I also wanted to test the multi core performance as that's where you get the biggest gain upgrading the chip. So I went ahead and cloned the Mac Daddy Kubernetes repo and ran the build there utilizing all the cores on both machines. Now if I'm being completely honest, I expect the difference to be much bigger, but the M4 Max only got around 28% gain over the M4 Air, which is pretty wild honestly. Keep in mind that the M4 Max cost well over double compared to the M4 Air. So at least for running code builds, the M4 Air is a beast. Even the editing performance on the Air is really good. I was able to keep the timeline resolution at 4K. Now for this project, I didn't apply any compute heavy effects like magic masking or denoise. And when I tried to add them, then the playback started lagging. But for the most part, the editing performance on the Air is really nice actually. With the export times, I wasn't expecting the Air to keep up with the Max chip as that kind of stuff is literally what the Max chip is built for and exporting the same exact project on both laptops, the MacBook Pro with the Max chip saw around 43% gain in exporting speeds. And even when editing I didn't see any overheating, sure the MacBook Air got a little bit warmer than the Pro because it doesn't have the fans, but there was no issues with throttling or anything. And as the last performance test I wanted to do some AI stuff and see how each of the laptops can run LLMs locally. So if you remember from my M4 Max video, I was able to run the 40 billion parameter DeepSeq R1 model without any issues. And there was still room to go even further. After the Air has performed so well with the previous tests, I just wanted to try this on the Air for fun. I started off light with the 1 billion parameter model and it easily got through it. So I jumped to the 7 billion parameter model, no real issues there, but we were approaching the RAM limit of the base model. So even on the base model, you can run a, let's call it decent LLM on your laptop locally, which is super dope. And just for fun, I decided to try the 40 billion parameter model, which again, the air was able to handle without any issues. I gotta say that at this point, the air was getting kind of warm, not hot, but definitely warm because of course it doesn't have any fans. But I'd say this is pretty respectable from the air considering the price. Now, if you're someone who just wants the solid laptop, then I think the air is the way to go for sure. Especially with the base model having 16 gigs of RAM, I think you'll be more than fine. For video creators, the missing SD card is a big hit, I must admit. But here's the thing, if you find yourself beefing up the specs on the air model and you start to see that price creeping up, then I just save a little bit more money and go with the 14 inch pro model instead. Because at that point, I feel like it's worth it 
just to get the better display, the ports, the fans, the speakers, etc. But yeah, I like this thing a lot and I'm gonna daily it for a few weeks for all my editing work and all my personal coding projects and then we'll do the day in the life with the M4 MacBook Air to get my final thoughts on it. I gotta say, so far for the price, it's looking really good. Now, if you found this video valuable, please subscribe to the channel. We're this close to hitting 100,000 subscribers and I'll see you in the next one.